Hey, it's your local fish keeper, Sabrina. Let's get salty. Today we are going to look into the different types of salt used in aquariums. Before we start, I just want to give a shout out to Meg, our new friend, for suggesting us this topic. I'll put her links up here in the corner somewhere. We're going to start off with the most common one, which is aquarium salt. Aquarium salt is basically sodium chloride. But wait, how does it differ from normal table salt? Table salt usually contains additives such as iodine, potassium, and anti-caking agent. Anti-caking agent is used to prevent the salt from lumping together. However, it is not safe for fish. Over the years, aquarium salt has been proven to be useful in the prevention and treatment against external parasites, fungus, and bacteria. It is also helpful in treating wounds and nitrate poisoning. Some people even use it to increase the TDS level in their aquariums. When I used to work at a fish store, they would always use aquarium salt as a stress reliever and also as prevention against unwanted diseases when new fish come in stock. The nature of wholesale is that all these fish would be overstocked in these aquariums before being sent out. So it is really normal for them to catch something. Plus, aquarium salt is much cheaper than medicine. Something to take note is that certain types of fish are much more sensitive to salt than others and that it is really easy to overdose salt. So when you dose salt, make sure you do it appropriately. Nowadays, in the market, there are all types of aquarium salt-like ones that are infused with methylene blue and tannins. But for the sake of today's discussion, I'll be talking about normal aquarium salt. Generally, you would want to use 1 tablespoon of salt per 3 gallons or 11 liters of water. Remember to mix it well until the salt crystals dissolve before adding it to your aquarium as not doing so can harm your fish. Also, salt does not evaporate out of water, so it is important to perform water changes to remove them once treatment is done. Personally, I do not use aquarium salt in my aquariums as my freshwater tanks are all planted tanks and some even have invertebrates in them. Most plants and certain invertebrates like snails do not tolerate salt and salt can actually kill them. I would only use salt for my quarantine tanks for when I get new fish in, but even then, to be honest, I haven't used aquarium salt in a very long time. For quarantine tanks, I would just monitor them and then treat them accordingly with medicine if something were to come up. Which then leads us to the next question, should we add aquarium salt in all the time? My answer to that is a simple no for the same reason as to why us humans don't take antibiotics all the time. You should only use salt during quarantine and for treatment purposes. Now let's move on to the next salt which is marine salt. Marine salt is not the same as aquarium salt. Marine salt is used in brackish, salt water, and reef tanks. It contains a large number of additional elements such as magnesium, calcium, and sulfates, and many more that are needed for marine fish, invertebrates, and corals to live in captivity and stay healthy. If you are a salty saltwater aquarist, you may come across these two terms, marine salt and reef salt. They contain the same elements or components except reef salt has a much higher level of these elements. Reef salts are mainly catered for aquariums with corals. With the help of a hydrometer or a refractometer, you can measure the appropriate salinity level needed for your brackish or saltwater inhabitants. Unlike aquarium salt, marine salt is to be used at all times. So when you do water changes or you take water out, remember to add marine salt in again. But if you're just topping off water, then you don't need to add in salt. And again, remember to mix the salt until it dissolves before adding it into your aquarium. Before we move on to the next salt, let's talk about salt regulation in fish and why not to place freshwater fish in marine waters and vice versa. Freshwater fish constantly tries to retain salt in its body, so when placed in a salty or saline environment, the fish will absorb as much salt as possible, which then leads to dehydration and soon after, death. Saltwater fish constantly tries to get salt out of its body, so when placed in a freshwater environment, you're basically drowning it. Urihaline fish are fish that are able to tolerate a wide range of salinity, from fresh to brackish to salt water. A well-known urihaline fish is the sailfin molly. 
this fish can live in any aquarium after proper acclimation. Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate, so it is completely different from aquarium salt and marine salt. You can normally find pure Epsom salt sold at pharmacies and general stores. They are normally used for relieving muscle soreness and stress. In the aquarium, they can act as laxatives and reduce swellings which is useful in treating constipation, bloating and drops. There are two ways to go about with the treatment. First is to treat it for a longer time period but at a low dosage. The recommended dosage is 1 eighth of a teaspoon for every 5 gallons or 19 liters of water. You can leave it in the water for a couple of days until the fish is looking better and remove it via water changes. Second is to give your fish an Epsom salt bath for a short time period. The recommended dosage is 1 tablespoon per gallon or 4 liters. This is a much higher concentration so only leave your fish in the salt bath for 10 to 15 minutes max and remove your fish from the bath once the time is up and if you see any signs of stress. I hope today's video has been somewhat helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more content and especially don't forget to comment down below as I love hearing your thoughts and reading your comments. Until then, see you next time!